YouTube Ozzy going the Goat House is back. Ranking offensive rookies based on their chances to win the Offensive Rookie of the Year award. And we'll take a look at their odds as well. Who, what are some guys you can throw a couple bucks on for fun. Uh, but no, and we'll do the same thing for uh, Defensive Rookie of the Year. Separate video, next video. Uh, but Caleb Williams, we got to rank number one. And in terms of odds... He is the most likely to win Offensive Rookie of the Year, only plus 135. Um, I think we'll all be in agreement on ranking him number one, perhaps. Uh, we talked about maybe other quarterbacks like Drake May, maybe have a little bit more upside, even though Caleb Williams has a ton of upside. But year one, it, it, he's got to be the guy, not only when it comes to quarterbacks, when it comes to all offensive rookies, uh, you know, with his talent level and all, all the weapons the Bears now have or did already had, he have and DJ, guys like DJ Moore. Um, so he should be... Very solid, very productive year one. So I rank him number one. I'll rank Drake May, Drake May number two. And maybe it's a little risky because maybe he doesn't start week one. Hell, maybe he doesn't start at all this year because they just, there's a chance the Patriots want to go like, hey, he's a, he's our future. We're not ready to win right now. Let's have him sit and learn. Let's not throw him into this. You know, maybe this season's not going too well. It's like, hey, we'd rather just not throw him into this. So I understand the risk, and that's probably why the odds are 2,200 pretty high, uh, but I, I, he's just too talented where I think he'll get on the field and he's too talented for, for the odds to be at 2,200. I, I, it's worth throwing a couple bucks on. If it's a dollar, whatever, I, I think it's definitely worth it. Uh, maybe more than that because he, he's just too talented of a player, you know, to, to uh, have no shot, you know, to, to win rookie of the year. So I rank him number two. Marvin Harrison Jr. I'll put at three, uh, only plus seven hundred odds. But you know, decent. You know how polished, how good of a receiver he is. Uh, I think he could be one of the more productive receivers in the NFL, not just rookies. Um, so that gives definitely gives him a, a decent shot there. So he's definitely in the top three. We'll put Jane Daniels at four. You know, tough one because uh, that uh, the way he played at LSU is it going to translate right away is he going to be able to play like that is he going to be able to run like he did uh, you know in college you know maybe not but he does have some weapons uh, it's a whole new offense it'll be tough to game plan for for opposing defenses as Kingsbury offense so um, yeah him being a dual threat type player you want to rank him higher but I, I think it's gonna be a little more challenging Obviously, it's going to be a bigger learning curve for him, perhaps. But I'd still rank him the top four because very talented, dual threat. Um, should be a problem. Should be tough to game plan for, like we said. I rank Malik Neighbors at number five. Eighteen uh, hundred's pretty good odds. You know, if you're if you're betting another one, you can throw a buck on or two if if you want to play it safe. But I think it's pretty good because you do worry about the quarterback situation with the Giants. But with Neighbors, you don't fully have to worry about that because it, you know, worst case. You're, you know, you can't get him the ball downfield, and I think they will be able to. But worst case, you're just scheming things up underneath, and he's going to work after the catch because he was the best weapon after the catch in the entire draft, one of the best we've seen in a long, long time. So uh, he's a safe bet to get his hands on the ball and get some production, probably a lot after the catch. So plus 18 under the more I'm talking about that one, that, that seems pretty good. Like another one worth, you know, a couple bucks. Why not? You know, for if we want to have some fun. Um, you know, if you're you know, really a betting man, you throw a little bit more on some of these guys. If you want to go for just real, like who's going to win, that's why I rank Caleb Williams number one, and you don't really care about the odds, you want to go that route, you could as well. Uh, next group of guys, put J.J. McCarthy there, plus 1,200. It's definitely risky like Drake May because do they just start Sam Darnold? Um, it's crazy that he has much, much better odds than Drake May. I, you know, I know difference in talent, you know, the Vikings – versus the Patriots, McCarthy versus Drake May. McCarthy has the better offensive line. I don't know about how much better, but in terms of weapons, it's definitely better, um, you know, for sure. So that could be the difference. Maybe Vegas is a little more confident with McCarthy. McCarthy playing more snaps this year. Um, you know, they, they could start Sam Darnold, but – yeah, I mean, it's another good option with the weapons that he has. It's just I think there's just better guys that are a little more likely, but I think McCarthy could be solid this year. Uh, and then Roma Dunze for the, another Bears guy here at, at number seven. It's a little bit of a tricky one because in terms of talent, he's right there at Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors. But in terms of opportunity, that drops him down a little bit uh, because DJ Moore and Keenan Allen is there. I mean, in that they're not all going to get the same amount of snaps this year. They're not all going to play – 85% plus snaps like somebody's gonna get 
out of the three, someone's going to get below, like much below that, like 70%, maybe below that out of the three. So it is a little risky. Of course, there could be, you know, Keenan Allen misses some games here and there. So that could kind of boost somebody's snaps. Who knows? Dunze could be, it seems like him and Caleb Williams, you know, them coming in at the same time that they have a lot of, they have a good, good chemistry already, good connection. So he's that good where he could lead the Bears. So it's a little in terms of rookie of the year award, like betting, it's a little boomer bust with him. Uh, Lad McConkey, I was actually thinking about putting, he has the same odds as a Dunze. Now, who's the better receiver? It's, it's a Dunze. But McConkey could have better opportunity because he realistically could be, like I said, a Dunze could be the best receiver on the Bears. I'm thinking it's going to be DJ Moore, but McConkey could be the best receiver on the Chargers. Um, you know, they ha- I think him versus Josh Palmer probably does. Quinton Johnson hit his stride. They did sign DJ Chark as well. Uh, but McConkey with a great quarterback like Justin Herbert, and the guy that can play in the slot play outside, he's going to be productive. Good after the catch. Could he be this year's Puka Nakua? So I thought about ranking a little higher, but again, some worry about the durability, you know, issues there. He missed a little bit last year. Um, and then, yeah, Josh Palmer is pretty solid and Johnson could be, you know, solid. They're trying to add other receivers. They add DJ Chark. So maybe he won't at first glance, like he's going to get a ton of looks and he very well could, but maybe in, not so fast with that, with just j- going all in with him being the number one target every single week. Uh, but that's one that's probably, you know, worth our boomer bust type guy. Roman Wilson, I'm going to rank in the top 10. He is at an absurd plus 8,000 odds. I'm definitely putting a few, at least a few bucks on that. Uh, you know, it's hard to see Roman Wilson, you know, the little slot receiver from Michigan winning, even though everyone knows he's good, winning rookie of the year over Cale Williams, Drake May, Marvin Harrison Jr. Look at the receivers, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors. It's hard to see, but that is a plug-and-play slot receiver, like safe bet to be able to play the slot, be able to get open. It's not going to be that challenging for him. What would be challenging if is if he played outside way more than he did in college and he had to deal with press from NFL corners. He's they're not going to really they they might ask him to do it here and there. He's not going to play 100% of the snaps in the slot, but he is going to play the slot. Uh you know, and they don't have that guy right now. Like Deontay Johnson played a lot from the slot. I think Roman Wilson get even more snaps than Johnson did. Uh and this is going to be a small ball type offense on under Arthur Smith, under Russell Wilson with the running backs they have. Uh, you know, it's going to be a small ball type offense. And I, I think there's going to be weeks where Pickens is way more productive than Wilson, but I think Wilson's going to be a little more consistent. There's going to be, you know, and then Pickens is obviously that big body outside receiver, you know, so Wilson's getting in and a Russell, we got to trust Russell, Russell Wilson here, but what does Russell Wilson like do? He likes to throw underneath in the middle of the field. So I, I think that, you know, we could see production from Ron Wilson, like safe, easy production is he going to be super super flashy no so i think he's going to but it doesn't really matter i think he's going to be productive so plus eight thousand odds ridiculous I, I again he could be the most productive receiver i it would not completely shock me he was my number six receiver in the draft then xavier worthy which we know is a really good fit i think it's a little risky um you know we don't know how many games for she rice can be going to get suspended if he gets suspended all year i mean that'd be great if you bet on worthy then because um you know it's just him and hollywood brown um, you know, and I, Kelsey has to get some snaps, some looks as well, obviously. Um, they can use them gadget type plays at first. It's a, you know, how much are they going to use them? Which ways are they going to use them? But it's probably another boomer bust guy, but plus 1800. And other guys that I thought were worthy of being on the list Brian Thomas Jr., plus 3000. He's either going to play like the rookie of the year or he's going to be pretty quiet year one. Um, he didn't have a major, like, huge route tree at LSU, so. Um, you kind of put him on the sideline, let him go to work, and he can do that in the NFL, but he's going to have to develop a little bit more. Uh, and then at the same time, they have Christian Kirk and Gabe Davis out there. So, But Brian Thomas Jr. is so good at uh, catching the ball at the highest point, you know, contested catches, and he's got that speed. He's so good downfield. It kind of fits Trevor Lawrence and kind of replacing Calvin Ridley that he could be super productive right away. Or it's like, yeah, he's got to learn a little bit, add a little bit more to his game. We're going to, we're going to give Kirk and Gabe Davis more reps. Uh, you know, all three are going to get reps, but out of the three, one of them is going to get less than the others. You know, typically there's two guys that I'd say Kirk's going to get the most reps, but typically there's two that get above, above 80, 85%. Most likely, maybe it'll be those guys, but we'll see. And then Jonathan Brooks, it's a little risky again because they have two other running backs that are pretty decent on the roster. 
mainly looking at Hubbard uh, and then Brooks, they might not be worrying about like, oh, we got to get it. Like, I think they're going to be in agreement in the staff that this is our guy. Like, this is the guy of the future. He's probably the most talented running back right away, but they're not going to be worried about like, we got to give him the load. Like, he's got to be the starter and he's got every week he's going to be the guy. Uh, they're probably not worried about that because they have other backs. He's coming off the injury. I think he's going to be good to go week one. I'm not really worried about that. But uh, in running backs are usually a pretty good position for winning rookie of the year. So I, I think that makes it intriguing. But, again, a little risky because we don't know um, who's going who's, uh, to be playing. It could be uh, every week, every other week thing, whatever. You know, but – yeah, the odds, I mean, you, you can see it. Like, Drake May, we have the top, and you see everyone's pretty similar in odds up there except for Drake May, so that's why it's one It's definitely worth, like, even if you don't think he's going to win, if you really don't think he's going to win, if you really don't think he's going to play much this year, then don't don't even do a couple bucks. You know, it's not, it's not even worth it. Um, but I think that's one that everyone should be kind of looking at. And the more I talked about Neighbors, the more I liked it, just because it's kind of a safe bet. Like, he's going to get the ball. I don't really, it doesn't matter who's that quarterback, does out of any of the guys in the roster, like he, it, it matters. You know, he's gonna get more production if the quarterback's throwing the ball well downfield. But no matter who the quarterback is, he's gonna get production. He's gonna get looks. He's so good after the catch. Um, so the more I was talking about neighbors, the more I like that one at plus eighteen hundred. Um, McConkey could be receiver one for the Chargers. So I really thought about having that one high. But Roman Wilson, he, he's gonna get great opportunities from the slot. Plus 8,000. It seems pretty damn good there. And then we'll do the defensive video next. And there's a couple that really stand out. There's a, there's a guy that I actually have listed in the white underneath the top 10 for, for defense that has absurd odds that I like. Again, it'd be a little risky to put some money on it, but throw a dollar on it. Um, you know, So I'm excited to talk about the defensive, one, uh, defensive guys as well. If you want to comment with your rankings, uh, or which ones you're betting on. You know, you don't have to pair the, the betting and just ranking who's going to win rookie of the year. If you want to give me your thoughts in the comments, feel free. Always uh, fun looking at those. Everyone's diff- different uh, opinions there. Uh, but that'll wrap it up for this one. Kind of a quick one here. We'll do the defensive video next. We had a bunch of videos covering the NFL, covering the NFL draft, you know, post draft on the channel. So check it out. Uh, links in the comments for anything are important, our Twitter and our sponsors. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.